Hey, this is Chris Menard. As promised, uh, I'm going to give you a chart today that's dynamic that'll chart the highest and the lowest automatically in a different color. But before I do that, today is July 19th, 2018. And the only reason I'm telling you that is I don't know why I didn't catch this, but the ribbon in Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, has been got an overhaul. Do you see the different colors? The icons are the same and everything works the same. Conditional formatting used to have a not equal symbol in it. Insert's been changed a little bit, so has delete. Um, wrap text, that arrow used to be in black, is now in blue. And it's not just on the home tab, it's any tab that you click on. And once again, it's in all the Office applications, the big ones, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. So anyway, let me get to my chart now. So if you don't have, by the way, the new ribbon colors, it's an Office 365 feature, and you'll probably have them in the next month or two. I think I got this just last week and I didn't even catch it until I'm like, oh, that does look different. So here we go. I'm inside my data. I've got a list of states. I've got a list of order numbers. Alt F1 will make a column chart. What I do not want you to do is to click inside this chart. So I'm going to left click, watch all the columns get selected. And then left click once. Now just that column is selected for Georgia. And then go make it a different color. And then go find the lowest value and click. Don't do that. That's what I see a lot of people do. The reason is it's not dynamic. You manually did it. So let me do an undo and get rid of this chart completely. Good. You're going to add what's called a helper column. I don't care what you type in it, but those are the two functions I need to figure out. I'm going to start off real simple. I'm going to write an if statement that's going to say if B2 equals MAX function of B2 through B7, need to make that absolute cell reference. I'm going to use the F4 function key to do it. So if B2 equals the max of B2 to B7, what do you want to do? I want to return B2. That's the value if true. If it's false, what do you want to do? I'm going to return a blank. Those are your quotations. I should get a blank for all the rest of the cells except that first one because that is the highest value. Let's test it. Let's make that 225 and it's working. Let's change this to 230. Good. But here's the issue. I just did MAX. I need to find the lowest value. So I'm just going to double click inside here. I'm going to add OR. So I'm going to do an IF statement and an OR statement. Let me hit escape. Let me do it one more time. If I can type E O R. Here we go. So if OR, if B2 is the max, that part's done. Comma, notice it says logical two. I'm still in the OR, and the second one is, what do you want to do now? Well, I'm going to say if B2 equals MIN, and it's the same steps now. Absolute reference. Value of true, return B2. Value of false, return blank. So the first time I did it, I just had MAX, and then I did it again and added OR and put in MIN, and that is it. So I should get the highest and the lowest, and it's working. So now I'm going to select this. I'm going to use the mouse this time. Instead of doing Alt F1, I'm using the mouse, Insert, Column Chart, Column Chart. Let me do that one more time. One of the problems with being an Office Insider, and that's why my ribbon is different, is every once in a while, stuff doesn't work the way it's supposed to. That's the drawback. So there's my chart. 
It's a column chart. It's charting both column B and column C, but that's really not what I want. And watch how easy this is to do. Right click with your mouse on any column. Go down to Format the Data Series. Over to the right is a task pane that appears. Make sure you're on this one right here that says Series Options. Series Overlap. Watch what happens when I keep clicking the up arrow. They're slowly getting together. So I know what I want to do is I'm going to just get this, drag it all the way to the right as far as you can. It puts one column on top of the other. Close. Click outside the chart and let's test it. Let's give Arizona 250 working. Let's give Florida 58 and we're in business. So there's a column chart with a helper column over in column C and there's the formula that I used right there to take care of this chart and make it dynamic. Helper columns are major, so I'm actually officially done with this video, but here's some extra stuff, and I'm going to fly through this. It is called Flash Fill. I've got three sets of data in here. I'm going to start off right here. Here's Flash Fill. I want to put the last name and the first name together, so I type in my name. Control E, Flash Fills it down. Data tab, there is Flash Fill right there. Here I go again. I've got product IDs and they're broken up into three different ones. 205 is the first part. Tab GA. Tab 782. Control E. Tab. So I just flash filled all those down. So now I can sort for example by state which was the middle part. I just avoided using the left function the right function with find, the left function with find, and the mid function. Now here's where a helper column comes in handy. I've got names, but I've got some people have a middle initial and others don't. So flash fill, flash fill, I know that's incorrect, flash fill. What's the key here is that the first names are correct and the last names are correct and Excel's flash fill feature just didn't know what to do with that middle initial. So let's come over here and add a helper column in column E. I'm looking for either the number one or the number two with this function. It tells you how many characters are in there. So the letter A is one and the period is two. That's why I got a two. If it was simply A period, you'd get a 1. I'm sorry if it was just A. Without the period, you'd get a 1. So what I, know, what I need to do now, this is pretty simple. That's all one range. I'm going to just simply right click, do a sort, smallest to largest. Anything over 2, I know Flashville messed up on, so just delete them. So now all the names are correct, and I can delete this helper column if I want to, but I'm going to leave it there. I've got to get to work. I appreciate your time. Everyone have a good day. Thank you.